Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Class of 2023 Commencement Ceremony. Thank you for being here as we celebrate our graduates tonight. If you are able, would you please rise for our national anthem. Feather, and I am your 2023 class president. On behalf of the class of 2023, I would like to thank you all for coming to support our graduates. I just want to start by saying we've made it to the finish line. Well, almost. Just hang on just a little bit longer and then we'll be there. For the past 12 years, we have been running this race. From preschool to 12th grade, we have faced our number of obstacles. I mean, just how much has the class of 2023 experienced in four years? Let's see, we had triple E, you know, that thing with the mosquitoes, COVID, online learning, construction. I mean, I think we all had an ongoing joke whether the cafeteria or the Culver's was gonna be finished first. We've had our fair share of loss and so many other challenges, but whether we're stumbling through the finish line or running through it, we all made it. What the class of 2023 has accomplished is amazing. I mean, it's truly phenomenal. We have persevered over and over again. And granted, many other classes have too, but the class of 2023, we overcame. And I think we did that through the help of our amazing staff, our friends and family, and this amazing community. So let's give a hand for them. time, we have rallied together and lifted each other up in our times of need. The class of 2023 is not one that's just going to be phased out. 
This class is going to be one to remember. We didn't just finish this race, we won it. As we come to a close on the past four years, I just want to say thank you for the memories, thank you for the fun times, thanks for the absolute chaos. So let's get this ceremony underway, let's get those diplomas, and let's do this! Great job, Chloe. Thank you very much for uh, getting us started and getting it opened up tonight for us. We really appreciate that. Well, good evening, everybody. I am Kevin Messina, and it is my honor and my privilege to be the superintendent of Byron Center Public Schools. I'd like to get things started tonight by thanking all of those who make this night super special and such a celebration. A special thank you to Mr. Joseph and the entire high school staff to coordinate all you see tonight. Their long hours and dedication is noticed and makes a wonderful experience for all. As I thank the high school staff, I also want to celebrate all that make this a true celebration for Byron Center as we enter the end of a career for these students. Starting with preschool staff all the way to our high school teachers, they make it happen. It is teachers, administrators, parapros, bus drivers, food service, maintenance, all that make it so hard and special for everybody to be successful tonight. From the moment the students start in BC, it takes so much teamwork to get all the way to their senior year. A special thank you to the Board of Education who support from behind the scenes to make sure that funding and programs happen at the highest level. They truly have a servant heart and complete long hours on behalf of all students. Thank you to the parents or that special adult who are right besides these students in front of us for every step of the way. On the hard days when you needed extra support, they were there. But most of all, I want to start by thanking each of you students for everything that you did each day and the pride that you showed for being a Bulldog. There were long days, happy days, frustrating days, but all days were filled with experience to help you establish who you are and the work it was seen in and out of the classroom that made you learn everything that you needed to do. Throughout your time at the high school, there was a consistent theme of BC pride. Whether it was in the classroom, on the field, or on the stage, you highlighted key character traits that needed to show that pride. In true Bulldog fashion, you did not disappoint. You have perseverance. You stuck with it. You were able to have grit each and day, in and out, on every part of everything that you did. You were able to keep charging forward, making yourself better in every step of the way. Perseverance is not just achieving success, but learning from failures and learning from setbacks. Nothing exemplified this more than jazz orchestra who had guest artists come in from around the world and give feedback to our students. It was hard to hear that feedback at times, and it was hard to hear some critique against you, but it made yourself better. As with any test, sport, or anything worthwhile, you had the courage to keep going when things seemed impossible. That is BC Pride. You show respect. As Bulldogs, you treated others with dignity, honor, and consideration, along with the way you acknowledge others' achievements by being courteous and polite. By showing this respect, you created a culture where everyone felt valued and appreciated. This was shown by the Lynx program at the high school. Because of your care and your love of fellow students, that program is now throughout every school in Byron Center. Your respect of others made a direct impact. In fact, one of the highlights of my year was at the senior award ceremony when Aspen Matthews was awarded a pride award and the, the cheering was off, off of the roof and off of the charts. So awesome job on that. That is VC Pride. You have integrity. Your integrity showed by building and maintaining strong relationships with one another. You did the right thing when nobody was watching. You had the courage and the commitment to do what was right even when it might not have had a direct impact on yourself. Your high level of integrity inspired others to do the same. For the first time ever, you were part of and created the Bulldog Challenge. You partnered with local Granville schools to raise funding for our hand-to-hand -hand partnership, which helps get food for families who need it the most. You worked tirelessly to make it happen and support something that is greater than yourself. That is BC Pride. 
You are not afraid of discovery. This can be a tough one where it can be very uncomfortable. It is time where you face your fears and even your weaknesses. However, it can also be a time when you gain a deep understanding of who you are and what it requires to have an understanding and an open mind. It allows for a fulfilling life and meaningful connections. Recently, I had the privilege of getting to know and talk with the Science Olympiad team who made it to the state finals. This group was filled with discovery as they learned new things about areas they never would have dreamed of. They now know more about leaves and trees than they ever really wanted to. That is BC Pride. And last, you showed excellence. Excellence is a term that is used to describe the highest level of achievement in any field. We will see that a lot tonight. However, it's not just about achieving that highest level, but is really the quest for improving yourself. It takes hard work and always pushing to improve and never settle for opportunities to grow. The hockey team came to mind when I think of excellence. This year, that team was filled with many seniors that made it all the way to the state finals. To do that, it took excellence and skills and practice along the way. Although it was a tough loss, and it was a tough loss, I was so proud of Bulldog Nation that day. The team showed excellence in the way they handled themselves in defeat and pride in their achievement. And I also was proud of our student section that day. That is excellence. When things don't go your way and you still show excellence, that is BC Pride. Although these are just a few examples, they embody you, seniors. As Bulldogs, you have continued to show your pride in all that you have done and that all you will do well into the future. As I close tonight, I want to pay special tribute and attention to eight special students. They will continue for sure to show BC pride at the highest and the most service-oriented level. The following eight students have made the commitment to continue their path by giving to all of us that are in this arena tonight. Their next step will be serving our country in the armed forces. They will give of themselves so that each of us can continue to have the freedoms and the privileges that we have each day. I'd like the following students to stand, and at the end, I would like us as a community to acknowledge them. Bennett Bertels, who will serve in the United States Coast Guard. Ben Chase, who will serve in the United States Air Force. Jackson Garberick, who will serve in the United States Navy. Shayla Humphrey, who will serve in the United States Marines. <laughs> Levi Hughesby, who will serve in the United States Army. <laughs> Elijah Maxwell, who will serve in the United States Air Force. <laughs> Carmen Linda Santiago Sayez, who will serve in the United States Army. And just as of today, just hours ago, they're not listed in your program, Bree Bagley, who will serve in the United States Air Force. Please pay tribute to these special students. Thank you, Byron Center community, for showing your respect for their selfless commitment and what their choice is for the next step in their life. So seniors, as you leave Byron Center High School, you will take your memories that will last a lifetime. You are now equipped with knowledge, skills, and life lessons that will help you navigate all life's challenges. Graduation may mark the end, but it also signifies the beginning of more ways to show your BC pride. Congratulations and go Bulldogs.
awesome students as their high school principal. First, First I, I want, want to echo, echo Dr. Dr. Messina's thank, thank you to the board and our staff for the, for the work, work that, that you have done with these kids. kids. The, the hours, hours that they spend, countless hours, hours and evenings and weekends, and weekends doing what you do is so honorable, and thank you. And there's a couple of special thank yous tonight for a couple of individuals who spent uh, countless hours trying to make this all happen. Thank you to Pam Gillespie and Bet Betsy Ingersoll for all of your work. Thank you to Greg Reinstein, who's back there in a booth um, showing all of this cool stuff, and Julie Vanderlaan down here capturing it, Patrick Vidro, who's somewhere around connecting it all, and all the work that you guys have done to make this place the way it is. Thank you. I also want to thank Calvin University for partnering with us and allowing us to use this awesome space, and Sam Tuitt, who has walked through this with, um, with us every step of the way. Thank you, Calvin. Well, students, I have the opportunity to give you one last lesson before you graduate. And I want to give you a lesson that for me, I think is one of the most important lessons that you can take with you after tonight in graduating. And it has to do with having an attitude of gratitude and what happens when you do. And I will tell you that I believe that this one step will help you with riches, with happiness, and with success. And I know you don't believe me yet. There's research behind this, but I'm going to share. But I need to start with a story. So the guy in the middle on that picture up there, his name is Jeff Muller, and last weekend I ran a 5K with him at the Riverbank Run. And his story starts over 20 years ago when he was diagnosed with uh, an autoimmune disease that attacked his body and eventually led to liver failure. Last summer, he was on the brink of death and was fortunate to find a liver donor. And so Jeff, over those 20 plus years that I have known him, has been a man who has had an attitude of gratitude. He had this disease that was killing him, and yet he was always thankful to other people. He got a liver transplant. He went to Henry Ford Hospital, and during that um, liver transplant, he kept thanking the doctors, thanking the nurses, thanking the people that were around him, and he was so, he had so much gratitude, but most of all, for his donor's family. He, it hurt his heart and he would tear up talking about the family that lost someone so he could live. He had an attitude of gratitude. His body rejected that liver and he was sick and in the ICU. I was fortunate enough to get a second liver. But he was so gracious for the first, it hurt his heart to have a second. He couldn't handle himself um, with the tears because of the families that, and what they had to go through for him to get a second liver. And so he made a pact that he was going to get back on his feet, get back to running, and do the Riverbank Run 5K in honor of his two donors. And he completed it. And so when he was done, he needed to take a picture, and that's not a peace symbol. That's saying thank you to his two donors. See, Jeff has figured out an attitude of gratitude, and he lives a life, a rich life, a happy life, and a successful life, not because of everything that's gone his way, but because he chooses to. So let's start with riches. Let's start with money. Mm, you're all like, yeah, sh show me the money, right? How, how is this affecting money? Well, first of all, um, let me tell you that back in 1985, I watched a movie called Back to the Future, and ever since, some of you parents, you know what I'm talking about. Ever since, I wanted a Toyota Tacoma. Black, right, Biff, uh, wax it up. If you've seen the movie, it's an awesome Toyota Tacoma. I wanted one for over 30 years, and I'd scroll through and look at Toyota Tacomas. And now, what I'm scrolling through is I'm looking for 17-inch bronze RT107 Rocktrix wheels with Falcon tires for my 2022 Toyota Tacoma. Do you notice that I'm not celebrating that I have a Tacoma? I want something new for my Tacoma. But that's what happens 
We always want something new. And the problem is our world is set up where they want you to want something new because they want your money. And so the more you want more, the poorer you feel, right? Henry David Thoreau said it best. He said, I make myself rich by making my wants few. So how do we do this? If we focus on what we have versus what we don't have, you start to realize how rich you are versus how poor you feel. Do you know that there's over one billion people in this world that live on less than a dollar a day? Over one billion people. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the person who has just more money than we do, more successful than we do, better car than we have. So it's an attitude of shifting and looking at what you have versus what you don't have. All right, let's see how does that affect happiness. There is a study actually, and this comes out of Charlotte, Virginia, where they start talking about what happiness is and it's actually those who are gra have gratitude and are thankful for what they have are more likely to be happy because they're grateful what they have instead of looking at what they don't have. But there's an enemy of happiness and it's called worry. How many of you worry? Uh-huh, yep, a few of you. I know you know how you do, absolutely, yep, right? Okay, but here's what the study found, is out of all of the worry that we do, 40% of that worry is about something that hasn't even happened yet. I might get dumped. Hasn't happened yet. A creeper might come to my door. Hasn't happened yet. So that worry, okay, let's rationally think about this, right? Why are we worried about something that hasn't happened, right? But we spent 40% of our time on that. 30% is in the past, let it go. 12% is about your health. Oh, I got a weird feeling right there. Am I having a heart attack? Nope, just gas. We're okay. 10% is petty things. You see that person that's in the hallway and they give you a look. You're like, does she not like me? Ten, let it go. Only 8%, the study says, only 8% of what you worry about is something you actually should worry about. 8% are things that you can actually do something about and have control over. For example, I am worried I'm gonna fail that test. Study. There's something you can do about it, right? So how do you turn that 92% off? The study says what they found is that if you spent the first five minutes of every day with gratitude, first five minutes writing down what you're grateful for, because a grateful heart, no worry can set root in it. The third thing is success. See, with success, Andy Andrews, one of my favorite authors, he says that success comes from encouragement and opportunities. That if you have encouragement, because you're grateful, and opportunities, you will be successful. So we're gonna test this theory, and we're gonna see what happens if we give some encouragement and opportunities. Okay, do opportunities come? So um, the seniors know that I'm gonna pick on somebody, and we're gonna see here. All right, who wants to go first? I'm coming over to Alyssa first. Alyssa, um, the question that I ask these guys is, was there somebody in the house tonight who has an attitude of gratitude? And we're going to talk about you. So we're going to start with Alyssa. Um, so I wanted to talk about my dad, Greg Dykstra. Um, he was diagnosed with stage 3 colorectal cancer in May of 2022. And I will say he is cancer free now. Um, I wanted to recognize him because I've never seen someone have more positivity when they're, when they're faced with such a life-changing event. And I am so proud of the way that he reacts with positivity every day. And he, every day that he's been through chemotherapy, radiation, surgeries, he's always had a smile on his face. And I'm so proud of him and thankful for his gratitude every day. Who's next? All right, we're gonna go Jacob. So I would like to um, point out my girlfriend, Katie, Katie Brumbelow. She just, if you see her walk in the halls, she just shines with positivity. 
and she has this little pep to her step. It's, it's weird, I'm not gonna lie. But she is so grateful for everything she does. She has a like journal in her room that she just writes all the things she's grateful for every single day and I just find it so uplifting because it's just like, for her to do that, that's crazy. Can we give Katie some encouragement? <laughs> all right. So I'm going to recognize Cindy Boyce. Um, she's always smiling all the time, anytime I've ever seen her. And she welcomed me into her family very recently and treats me like one of her own granddaughters. And I really appreciate that so much. All right, one more. Hi, I would like to represent Papa. I call him Papa. He's my grandpa. And I really appreciate him because of his generosity and open to his, he like opens people to his heart. And I just appreciate that a lot from him. So, yeah, that's my Papa. <laughs> So we just heard about four individuals who have positivity and gratitude. Now, for those of you who are in the workforce, those of you, um, how many of you would want some, somebody like what was just described out of one of those four individuals? Raise your hand if you would want them on your team, you would want them as a neighbor, you would want them hired, you want them to work with them or, work under, or have them work under you, one of the two. Raise your hand. So students, opportunity knocks. You have encouragement because you're talking about some positivity, going through tough times. Now, when you're talking about people who, uh, unless you talk about your dad going through cancer, he had every right to be grumpy, right? And going through that. But choosing that gratitude makes all the difference. So what the study says then is that those individuals they get the uh, encouragement from others, the opportunity for others, and be get opportunity for success. And then success breeds success. Because the more opportunities you have, the more encouraged you become, the more encouraged you become, the more opportunities you have, and the more the success follows. And what follows success oftentimes is riches, and what follows riches is sometimes happiness. And they're all connected by doing one thing, shifting gears to an attitude of gratitude. So tonight, I have the opportunity to thank you for your four years at the high school, for doing amazing work, for showing BC pride, as Dr. Messina had said, and for um, successfully getting to this point today. Thank you. Thank you, teachers, for all of your hard work that you've gone, um, gone through, parents and friends for encouraging these guys along the way. So students, I want you to remember two things as you go beyond this place. I want you to remember an attitude of gratitude, and it's always a great day to be a Bulldog. Congratulations.
This year, we have two uh, co-valedictorians with a perfect tie with their GPA. I'd like to welcome up our valedictorians, Logan Collar and Ryan Wall. <laughs> Logan Collar is the son of Dale and Jody Collar. Logan is a member of the National Honor Society and an Eagle Scout. He is an AP Scholar with distinction. He wrestled and played football for four years and was academic all-state individual for both. He also played two years of baseball and two years of track and field. Logan is planning to attend Kalamazoo College to study chemistry and play football. He has been awarded the Lux Esto Scholarship and the Kalamazoo Alumni Scholarship. Congratulations, Logan Collar. Four years ago, we walked through the doors of Byron Center High School. We had made it, the big leagues, excited and bright-eyed, right up until the moment we were blindsided by reality, about a week in. Thank you to the teachers, helped to deaden that blow. Just as we were finding our footing in our new crowded halls and stairways, a freight train with the characters C O V I D 1 9 painted on it came crashing through our world. That same train backed up and ran over the rubble our sophomore year. After everything had been turned to dust, that train pulled away, leaving behind a flag with those same dreaded characters stitched on it. That flag hung over us like a dark pall. As the year wore on, the gloom cast by that flag diminished. By the beginning of our senior year, the shadow of that flag had all but disappeared, allowing us to return to what should have been normal. After three years of chaos, the relative peace was anything but normal. Regardless, here we are, alive and mostly well, though I managed to lose my appendix somewhere along the way. <laughs> we owe a great deal of thanks to the many people who saw us through our trials. To the teachers, the ones who were blindsided along with us, yet still managed to adapt and serve as a beacon to us to guide us through the storm. We offer our thanks. To the administrators, the people who work tirelessly behind the scenes to provide the best experience possible for us, we thank you. To the families gathered here tonight, for your support and guidance, we're grateful. Now, my comrades, look to your left and your right. The people who you sit with tonight have also helped to mold us and are deserving of gratitude. To that end, I thank you all. Now, what have we just thanked everyone for? In the words of Erwin Rommel, sweat saves blood, blood saves lives, and brains save both. We've spent the past four years gathering the brains that we might have to work and sacrifice less in the future. We've spent our time in the pursuit of a phrase, be prepared. All those times you said, I'm never going to need this, you were wrong. Yes, that specific skill may indeed be useless, but in learning it, you develop something useful. No one was prepared for the pandemic, at least explicitly. Computer skills and work ethic, both developed prior to the outbreak, got us through online classes. We are far more prepared than most you believe. Keep that in mind. You may not know how or when, but when, what you have learned here will be of use later. I was trained to be a lineman, a position where most kids are at least 200 pounds. I weighed 160. I was taught how to play like a normal lineman, which I wasn't. By learning to play like bigger kids, I developed my own way of playing. Though some of what I learned wasn't useful, I was prepared nonetheless because of it. Prepared as we are, the next step is not guaranteed to be easy. It's first and 10 on our own 20, and as Coach Sisko would say, it's gonna be tough sledding. Regardless of what rises to challenge you, press on. You're ready, even if you don't know it. It's going to hurt sometimes, but in the words of Shane Falco, Pain heals, chicks dig scars, glory lasts forever. As I must now take leave of you, I wish you well and offer you this. May your road rise to meet you and swiftly carry you onward. Godspeed.
And our second valedictorian tonight is Ryan Wall. Ryan is the son of Michael and Teresa Wall. Ryan is a member of the National Honor Society and a senior class representative. He has done four years of band and was marching band section leader. Ryan also played two years of JV tennis. Ryan is an AP scholar with distinction, and last fall he was named a National Merit Finalist and will be using that scholarship to attend the University of Alabama to pursue a computer science major. Congratulations, Ryan Wall. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to begin by actually thanking a couple of groups. Uh, first, the school board, who helps working behind the scenes keep everything running. Uh, I'd like to thank the teachers, who over the past couple of years have helped everybody academically and personally. I'd like to thank my friends, who have always been there with me, been great companions throughout the school years. And I'd like to thank my brothers, Kyle and Tyler, who have been great role models and examples of people to emulate. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank my parents for always being there, kind of pushing me to be my best. Now, while I was writing what I hope to be my magnum opus of a speech, I was really trying to figure out what to talk about that encapsulated my time at Byron Center High School. What I came back to was a mantra that I've been repeating basically every day for a couple of years, uh, that being, I just got to get through this week. <laughs> uh, I just got to get through this week. It's all uphill from there. Now I've uh, gotten through all those weeks and it's really easy rec to recognize that I wasn't generally looking forward to next week much. Frankly, I'm a little scared. Uh, I'm out of weeks to get through, so I don't know how to navigate what happens next completely. Uh, for many of us, we're going to be going to college, uh, kind of scary, feel maybe a little unprepared. Uh, others going into military or work, which is also a scary proposition. Now stepping into that next stage, I feel like in spite of the fear I have for the future, uh, I can say that my mantra was flawed. Shocking, I know. Uh, really quite easy to fall into the monotony and familiarity of just getting through this week, just grinding away without much thought. But I also think it's safe to say that it, that is extremely unfulfilling and to some extent it's a little depressing. I'm exhausted with that grind and exhausted with that mindset. I don't really know what's coming in the future, as I'm sure many of you don't. Uh, but what I've come to realize is that committing to that mindless grind in something you don't really care for, it's not worth it. Finding what you want to do, exploring different possibilities and opportunities, putting yourself in new positions to experience different things is what will help you find what you want. You got to find that thing and dedicate yourself to it because when you find it, then you won't be grinding anymore and it won't be a matter of just getting through the week, though some days it may still feel, the, feel that way. If you find something that you really want and enjoy, then you will look forward to what's next. You'll be excited for the future, which is really the goal in my eyes. As an uh, unknown author said, future is a fickle thing, imminent and mysterious, but it needn't be foreboding. Let the past handle that and look ahead to the opportunities that prevents them, present themselves to you, uh, such as freedom. Once again, I'd like to thank the school board, uh, anybody who has helped all of us students here, the teachers, Mr. DeHaan, uh, my friends, Aiden Rahman, and my family, for everything. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our students to be individually recognized for the completion of the four years. Students, when you come up, please remember that each of us represents so many more that I wish could be up here handing you a diploma and shaking your hand. But know that all of those faculty back there and so many more are proud of you and what you've done. So at this time, will the front, uh, row one, will you, will you please stand? And we are ready for the presentation of the diplomas.
Mary O'Neill. Olivia Pitch. Abisola Collier. Jada O'Neill. Jonathan Wallace. Cade Fortier. Ali Abu Awad. Aaron Burgess. Chloe Stephan. Elijah Schneider. Aiden Brahman. Jazzy Singh. Aliyah Brubaker. Chloe Feather. Katie Morrell. Serenity Metzger. Katie Richards. McKenna Crandall. Adam Lee. Matthew Brom. Kira Wilson. Kaylin Deppy. Eden Demissa. Owen Flannery. Ben Powell. Ryan Wall. Blake Hoppy. Logan Collar. Megan Tenharkel. Austin Krauss. Tannis Bromo. Chloe Lee. Peyton Stuck. Riley Vandertine. Abby Knoll. Hunter Schichtel. Ashen Hendges. Cassie Koval. Riley Bombeck. Mackenzie Bowling. Cameron Brookhuizen. 
Rachel Phelan. Alyssa Fidawa. Michael Bradshaw. Justin Riker. Avery Wilson. Lakin Pettit. Madison Hampton. Alyssa Dykstra. Peyton Farrow. Addison Streelman. McKenna Rose Turnbull. Avery Booth. Eli Coakley. Ava Clark. Jada Kearns. Chandini Mulkey. Mackenzie Stubblefield. Catherine Wells. Logan Carmer. Jason Seventy. Brady Reed. Finn Banks. Gabe Mahiv. Levi Hughesby. Madison Lowing. Fiona McGee. Kennedy Silvernail. Ellie Smith. Cora Malinsky. Anna Millard. Landon Quaker. Josh Philo. Ashley Nelson. Shannon Tesmer. Hannah Jo Falan. Kirsten Dykema. Marley Miller. Emma Hunt. Zach Jerusal. Aiden Pollock. Bree Bagley. Ellie Debras.
Hannah Rita. Ashley Benkert. Jessica O'Neill. Cadence Sparpana. Zach Bush. Casey Bushy. Khalil Grimbert. Carmelina Santiago Saez. Lexi Dice. Kennedy Johnson. Kendall Vandermolen. Allison Vandersloot. Alex R. Joshua Borsma. Max De La Peña. Juan Herrera Raimundo. Jeffrey Richard Bowling. Thomas Jack Ugama. Shaden Schaefer. <laughs> Alyssa Lanning. Jada Lynn Johnson. Adriana Howland. Noah Mitrin. Colin Wineski. Lucas Parker. Connor Wiederhold. Kari Brewster. Shayla Humphrey. Lisette Garcia Frutos. Ellie Martin. Isabella Searsma. Mallory Sanderson. Naya Susan. Reese Gildy. Lexi Zimmer. Daniel Graham. Natalie Gonzalez. Riley Kitchen. Audrey Denhoff. Nathan Cook. Ben Chase. Benjamin Richard Gilpin. Kara Lean. Spencer.
Spencer Steen. Jacob Robert Anderson. Paul Kimball. Jadzia Leith Irwin. Riley Bars. Amelia Bodonaku. Elaine Myers. Kaylee Bazine. Brody Langer. Denara Domeyer. Dominic Michael Kreiser. Noah Locke. Andrew Thomas. Jackson Gabriel Perez. Lauren Kenny. Amber Bright. Ashlyn Grace Wisner. Patricia Joy Meshack. Brady Unthank. Jack Crittenden. Lizzie Nicole Shamaniak. Harika Hepur. Chase Miller. Eli Bostelar. Mitchell Kitchen. Cooper Swanson. Nathan Irish. Alex Fredericks. Luis Rosario. Ashanti Perez Rodriguez. Jacob Gott. Ethan Trout. Jocelyn Hybor. Grace Taylor. Olivia Bald. Natalie Nordhook. Olivia Zulek. Gia Rossi. Jennifer Martinez. Celeste Gerke. Turner Miles. Ethan Scott. Keaton Reese Primo.
Carter Patrick. Shelby Asbeck. Maya Ellens. Anatea Matthews. Aspen Matthews. Sophia Eckert. Jocelyn Metcalf. Braden Sandholm. Logan Nicholas. Drew Leatherman. Luke Flores. Joseph Lovett. Ethan Wood. Logan Schaefer. Nick Totten. Lindsay Otis. Seth Paddinger. Will Vanderay. Ellie Dunn. McKenna Ferguson. Evan Kaiser. Michael Max. Jesse Lukens. Matt Trong. Jacob Lanning. Ariana Koipel. Madeline Glaram. Gio Nicastro. Cade Hall. Evelyn Lohman. Brianna Tiwinkle. Tobin Blakely Brems. Noah Van Ast. Dominic Rossi. Carson Stutes. Haley Jarko. Aaliyah Trevino. Bryce Thompson. Anthony James Pitch. Annabella Hausman. Madeline May Pitch. Allison Pitch. Gracie Pepper. Tim Clay. Clay. 
Colin Ford. Brianna Trump. Avery Mao. Josh Hagen. Colton Matisson. Haley Nicole Beek. Harley Dexter. Sophie Scans. Emily Timmerman. Joshua Lopez Jr. Zach Denton. Hudson Milner. Riley House. Seth Bacher. Logan Shaw. Stephen Michael Perez. Connor Plug. Emmy Pratt. Anna Feldpausch. Cam Walters. Austin Briggs. Aiden James. Jackson Bossenbrook. Kane Clark. Josiah Gondolario Gonzalez. Jackson Martin Gabark. Dylan Huffman. Dariel Cano Leon. Elvin Ramic. Devin Lay. Austin Buckley. Jacqueline Rideout. Samuel Shaw. Tara Rude. Emma Vandermeide. Summer Bardwell. Crystal Reyes. <laughs> Sophia Nelson. Karen Diaz. Aliyah Peterson. Isaac Wheaton. Rosemary Francis Simon. Madison Abuhawa. Brady Ahern. Alexander 
Kelly. Keegan Cohen Bear. Hunter McKenna. Dominic Batcherville. Terry Avery. Jacob Russell. Eli Maxwell. Kyle Bishop. Quentin Peterson. Dylan Mann. Bennett Bertles. Jason Barracks. Lauren Brem. Logan Moran. Davion Edwards yeah. Tim Lelensky Understood sheets. Orlando Williams. Natalia Castro Cauchy. Marta Fernandez. Helena Yelka. Emily Julian Istanas. Maina Safi Soumari. Léonie Carbon. Ayla Gu Xing'an. Meline Rachel Borman. Nika Banovic. Javier Ruiz. Graduates, would you please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present to you the graduated class of 2023. Students, you may turn your tassels. Congratulations.
You may return to your seats. Hi, my name is Serenity Metzger. I am the 2023 class treasurer, and I would like to thank everyone for coming. I would like to say that this is an end, but it's also a beginning. We've spent countless hours together playing in sandboxes, running around at recess, playing sports, or creating projects. We've definitely had our share of highs and lows, but after all of these years, we have finally reached the end. All of us are being pulled in separate directions, a new future waiting just outside the arena doors. There are many things that we definitely plan on leaving behind, but the things that will stick with us is our memories and our strength. When we look back at the, our high school years, we likely won't remember the times that we got winded going up the stairs or the bad grades we'd gotten. What we'll, we will keep are the good times, like when school got canceled freshman year, or the sports contest we've won along the way, the time we cried after Ms. Burlett's speech, <laughs> and the games we played on our last day. We will hold these memories close and cherish all the good things we had in high school, allowing them to guide us on our next step of our journey, wherever that might take us. Our strength and persevering has kept us going through the dark times. Our high school experience has been filled with obstacles on every step of the way. From EEE moving sports to COVID turning a year and a half of years upside down and every other thing that came in between. We've gotten through it. We face the obstacles head on and keep going. This has not been an easy journey, but we made it. And I know that in the future, no matter how ridiculous the odds may seem, within us lies the strength to overcome each challenge and achieve something beautiful. I know one day we'll look back at where we've started and be amazed at how far we've come. The end of the ceremony brings the beginning of the rest of our lives. Thank you, and everyone please remain seated until all the graduates have left the arena.